Thank you for coming and talking to us about the Twin Towers. I want to ask if you ever regretted taking that picture because it was probably their last picture. Here is that one funeral that we went to in Chinatown. It's a sea of blue. It wasn't even a question. I had to go. I needed to go see. I needed to go see this. It was hard to imagine. It was hard to, it was hard to even believe what you were seeing. The smoke was still rising from the fires that were burning floors deep in the ground. Metal workers were still cutting rubble out of the way. They had dump trucks that were being filled. They were going through an alley where they would spray all the debris down so the dust didn't fly off the trucks. This is where you can kind of smell that thick, heavy air. There was still a lot of smoke. Um, all the guys still working. I enjoy using marijuana le recreationally, uh, just straight up. I consume every day. It's not your pot smoking of the 60s. It's a new day. People are smoking at home legally, and many of those people are parents. She's my little buddy, like, uh, is my little shadow. Rory Dowd is the father of 11-year-old Riku. Two are quite a pair. It's just fun to hang out with my dad. Dowd's music relaxes him, but so does his marijuana. I'm a daily user. Um, I enjoy, you know, t smoking a bowl or eating an edible um, when I come home from work. Dowd does not use marijuana in front of his daughter, but she knows he does it. Even if I didn't know where it was, I, I wouldn't touch it. I know it's just like alcohol. It's not something meant for kids. Don't agree with pot smoking parents? Dowd tells the naysayers it's more common than you might think. Yeah, the taboo and stigma, I think, it definitely has lessened very much in the last 20 years. And for anybody who's still on the other side of that taboo and stigma, I keep up. Christine and Andre Gamez are even more open about cannabis with their kid. This is not a big deal to him. They're parents of seven-year-old Gabriel. Yep. <laughs> they, too, are daily users. When I get home and I have, um, you know, we have our smoke session, It'd be like somebody picking up their bottle of wine and having a, having a drink or having their beer after work at a bar. The Gamezes keep their paraphernalia out in the open, just steps away from their son. I know I'm not allowed to use it because I'm not old enough. But the couple argues it's similar to leaving booze out on the counter or cigarettes in reach. I don't hide anything from him, but I also feel like it's responsible parenting to not be, you know, sitting on the couch, I'm not smoking a joint with him right here. I feel like we're not pressuring him to know exactly what we're doing or what it is. But their stash of cannabis is tucked away. We have our flower here. Um, you know, we have some of our concentrates. Christine Gamez is a big believer in the products. Anything from smoking a joint to smoking out of a bong to do, you know, using concentrates and dabbing to just topical lotions and bath salts. And they're growing pot plants in the bathroom. This one is uh, cit uh, citrus. Christine says the products work. She had brain surgery years ago and found medicinal relief in THC, the chemical compound found in cannabis. Just two days after surgery, she dumped the morphine and all other prescribed drugs. I resolved my problem in mock speed. I mean, it gives me goosebumps just talking about it. Like, I, faster than my doctors can explain. She is such a believer in the products, she got a job as a manager at Bloom Dispensary. What can I do for you today? Bloom staff say, it's your neighbors. Graham and the blackjack for you. Your doctors, your teachers who could be using cannabis. All walks of life, yes, from... Um, you got your grandmas coming in with their kids. Some people may never be on board with recreational marijuana use, but these parents say it can be safe, it can be managed, and remember, it's legal. In Reno, Kim Burroughs reporting. After years of trying to fit in, a Bentonville West sophomore is embracing what makes him different and at times using it to his advantage. In this KWA special report, you'll meet Peter, a varsity wrestler who's been given a fighting chance. They say wrestling is about the struggle. He can't get you, let's go! Let it go! Let it 
go. Get the arm. Get the arm. Technique. Strength. Get that wrist out there. And heart. The whole life sport, it's like what you do on the mat reflects what you do outside the mat. It's not certain whether Pete Balin found wrestling or if wrestling found Pete. I love being part of a team because that's something that I'd been like missing from when I stopped sports to when I joined wrestling. But they're the perfect match. Once you get out and start wrestling, it doesn't matter how many legs you have. The guy's going to try. The guy opposite me is going to try to win, and I'm going to try to win. Until he joined the Bentonville West wrestling team last year, Pete had always fought to fit in. I had never really taken my leg off in front of anybody. He was born with only a portion of his right leg, which was amputated when he was just a day old. I have one leg, and <laughs> there's really no getting around that as as much as I want to, or as much as I've wanted to. And so it was kind. Of, it was nice just to start that again and be able to be myself. Wrestling helps him embrace his disability. Sure, there's some moves I can't hit, but there's also moves people can't hit on me. Move that leg! Yeah, there you go! He doesn't have the ability to just show up. He's got to give everything he's got, and if he doesn't, you know, it's going to be a quick out for him. you got to bring the hand up just for a second. Just His assistant wrestling coach, Jared Henning, says Pete's lack of limb isn't what sets him apart from opponents. It's what you can't see during a match. You can be good the first and second period with just skills and techniques. Pete, wrestle tough. Don't give him that wrist. But you got to have heart and endurance for the last two minutes. Keep fighting it down. Keep fighting down. He's crazy strong. He's pretty inspiring. You know, he's a fighter. I respect him. It's going to be amazing one day. He already is, but he's going to be even better. Win or lose, Pete's already gained so much more than any trophy could ever represent. It's been a huge confidence builder for him. Yeah. Um, um, almost uh, too much so. Every day he comes home, he tries to pin me on the ground and <laughs> actually probably could. Pete's ability to see the positives in life goes back long before he even became a wrestler. His parents did everything they could to give him the best opportunity. What we could do, you know, as young as he was, to try to give him, for lack of a better term, a leg up, um, you know, it's just... I feel like we owed it to them to try that. The Baylins connected with a prosthetist at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center when Pete was just a few months old. The doctor there developed a first-of-its-kind crawling prosthesis for him. Basically, just a cup with a rubber mat on it that we could put on his stump, but allowed him to crawl. As Pete grew older, he walked the halls of Walter Reed with a prosthetic leg among wounded soldiers. If I was ever going to lose my leg, losing it at birth was the, the best thing that could have happened because I've learned to adjust to life like this rather than be have my leg blown off in, in Iraq or Iran and come back and have to completely relearn everything. He served as, as an inspiration for some of those guys that, that to basically, hey, you know what, if that, if that little boy can do this, I can figure out a way to do it too. Pete continues to serve as an inspiration as he works to channel his strengths during his matches. If anybody ever feels like they're where they want to be, it means they're content with where they are. He's had to struggle, and some of these kids haven't. And, you know, he knows what it's, what it's like to, to be in this position where you just can't do anything about it. A struggle. No turns, Pete! Pete's willing to wrestle on the mat. If it's something you love to do, just do it. Of course, there's going to be different looks from people. Just go out and do it. Nice job.